Hi, Hi guys. guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Car Clan Podcast. This is episode 10, and today, yeah, the big t- <laughs> yeah, that's digit. right, 10, <laughs> one zero. Um, and for that, we're doing a special episode. We have ourselves a guest. It's a friend of the podcast, the fucking lion little slag himself, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi hey. Alan. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm good, man. Are you guys alright? Yeah, yeah, thank you for joining us. It's, uh, You're welcome. Bert told me I had a guest on here, and see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this will be the episode where you just have like no listeners and, and your sponsors all pull out. And... Oh, look, we have fucking sponsors. <laughs> hey, we were, trying, we were in talks with McDonald's about a Big Mac. Can I be worried? Do you not remember that? You're lying. You I remember that? that. You remember that. It's, it's called a callback. I remember that. We, we're referring to an episode that happened previously. As long as if you win small fries or veg bag, you choose small fries. <laughs> 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 uh, well, that's ruined it, because that was going to be one of my questions today. What would you pick, a small fries or a veg bag? But he's, uh, he's already answered that one for us. <laughs> <laughs> he's him. And she's... Uh, and he's him. And I'm in. <laughs> and I'm in. <laughs> so, do you want to introduce yourself then, Alan? Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I'm Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm a regular listener to the show. And you guys obviously asked me to come on. Well, you did, Nathan. You asked me to come on. You, you didn't really ask me. You just kind of said on episode nine that I would <laughs> yeah. be yeah. on episode ten. Um, because... As you mentioned last week, I'm a professional wrestler and I made my debut over the weekend for Alternative Wrestling World. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and can I just say, you did a phenomenal performance. Yeah, it was really good. It was, uh... I mean, it wasn't quite as good as Drake Winter's performance because obviously he won the match. So. <laughs> yeah, but did he really? He lay down for most of it. Isn't that just incredible heel work? I'm not <laughs> yeah, just don't get involved. <laughs> Well, I enjoyed it. It's the first time I've ever seen wrestling, ever. Like even on the telly. Well, what the WW. They that thing. just shows you how much she watches <laughs> the WW thing. That's the, the thing. she's watched. It's just the the women one from like, from America that that's on because Riley wants to watch them. Yeah, it's just, like it's the only ones worth watching at the minute, though. I think. Uh, no, there's this there's this uh, little company you may have heard of them. Um, called AEW, and they're absolutely fucking killing it right now. <laughs> yeah. I thought we weren't supposed to like AEW, though. I thought that was the... Well, I, do you know, when I was doing the wrestling podcast, we weren't supposed to like AEW, but I've actually watched some AEW since then, and I can't really argue with what they're doing. I watched some early AEW, and they had, like, Matt Hardy teleport, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's this AEW? Is bullshit. Uh, what is AEW? All, All Elite Wrestling. All Elite Wrestling. Where's that? So it's it's America as well, but oh. it's like the new rival for WWE. Uh, it used to be WCW was the the big ones. Okay. And now AEW is the one that's coming in to have a scrap with them. I haven't really watched any AEW. I watched a clip of uh what's his name? Uh, Summit Phoenix, Ray Phoenix, jumping off the cage onto the Young Bucks. Okay. Have you seen that? Yeah. It's absolutely mental. <laughs> I was watching it just it going, was. it's scary jumping off the top row. There's no way I'd be jumping yeah, off I, mean, I, I think that's the thing to like non-wrestlers. They think like, oh, jumping off the second row, it's not that high. But like when you're actually stood up there, it's it's so much higher than yeah. it looks. Yeah, I think it's some, the people forget that with a lot of things. Like I used to skateboard and you go and stand on top of like a six foot ramp. Well, you stand yeah. by a six-foot ramp. It's only like an inch or so bigger than you. But when you stand on top of a six-foot ramp, suddenly you're now like 13 foot in the air, really, because there's your height on top of the ramp as well. Mm. So yeah, and I think like, the fact that our eyes are at the top of our heads kind of puts us at a disadvantage in that way because it just yeah. feels like it's higher yeah. because you've got... Yeah, you've suddenly got this extra. If you and had then... eyes in our knees, it probably wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be loads better. <laughs> Although, but then that, climbing stairs might seem really scary. Yeah, yeah that that's a good point. point. <laughs> or the amount you smash your knees in as well. I th- I'm quite happy they're on top of my head. 
<laughs> just you thinking about uh, in your knees. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. No, just thinking of me going blind if my eyes was in my knees. <laughs> I mean, you can go blind with your eyes in your head as well. It's not yes. like a... Yeah, I know. You don't tend to get carpet burn on your on your face, though. It depends what you're doing. I was going to say, you've, you've definitely been doing it wrong. <laughs> what? What are you doing to get carpet burn on your face? Burying my face in someone's carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that didn't go where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> oh, God. Trying to get a taste of that carrot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you do a callback. Oh, God. <laughs> how did I do when I told that joke? Did I did I ruin it? No, you did all right, actually, to be fair. Oh. I think the problem was, because I listened to the podcast, I didn't get the visuals with it, so, like, it's going to seem different now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. How does a primary school teacher come up with jokes like that? Now, um, I'm only a primary school teacher between Monday and Friday <laughs> and between 8.40 and 3.30. The rest of the time, my questionable morals can go out of the window. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so where did the carrot joke come from? Well, one day I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh I actually can't remember, to be honest. I've, I've, I heard it years ago, and it's just one that always stuck with me. <laughs> oh, you, you say year, years like that? Years. years? It's years ago. I'm sorry that I'm not also from Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, black country lass. Oh, poor Lord, does he feel make you feel better? Did... <laughs> that just sounds like it's put on. You can't talk like that. Did you like... Uh... Kelda's complete misunderstanding of the carrot joke. Yes, that did actually tickle me. I was like, oh no. <laughs> didn't get it. And then like <sighs> you know when you, you know when you say something and you just waiting for the penny to drop? Yeah. And it's almost like you can hear the cogs turning inside the head. Mate, you you got the oh. edited version, the real version. Yeah. I'm I'm sat here. Staring at her, burning Ugh. holes in her head because I'm staring at that intense. It's got to have been for like three minutes. I'm just no, staring at her, just going, "Really? It's not." Yeah, it is. <laughs> You're just there, going, "What? Okay, it's gonna taste like carrot? No? Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I definitely repeated the punchline at least four or five times. Yeah. And you were just still going. But carrots do taste like carrot. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's not terrible. the carrots I was going to eat. Yeah. I know now. <laughs> Vulgar man. If we can go back onto the original topic a little bit. So your debut. Okay, yeah. What was um what was going through your head when you were stood back in Gorilla? Well Gorilla. Shall I tell you Oh hang on. Um do you want to explain what Gorilla is? <laughs> Um, so what it is, it's a great big A. <laughs> I knew that was <laughs> You can't say no, there's um, jargon in it, just expect me to know what it means. <laughs> so it's a wrestling terminology, and the gorilla position is when you're stood just behind the curtain about to come out. Uh, and I believe, I may be wrong on this, but I believe it's named after a former wrestling person called Gorilla Monsoon, who used to stand in that position during TV tapings. Oh, okay. Okay, so you were just standing where you would have stood, so that's why it's gorilla. Yeah. Ah. I, I assumed it's because it's where you stand pumping yourself up and beefing yourself up and being like, Ooh, let's go, yeah. And you're like gorilla in, you're beating your chest and getting ready to go out. I mean, that's a perfectly reasonable inference that you made there, Nathan, but it's wrong. <laughs> 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 Story of my life. Oh, yeah, I have the, a big bunch of questions here. Yeah, and you've so, nicked one of them. Yeah. So what? What? What was? Uh, how was the carrot? Was <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that joke? <laughs> Where, yeah. Well, we we teamed up to get that one. But um, okay. yeah. So what was what was going through your head when you were back in Gorilla? Well, I actually found out about my debut quite a while before it was going to happen. Mm. Um, I think I found out in like July. Um, but I was sworn to secrecy. Really oh, mate, he full blown <laughs> lied to me. I, I had a feeling, 
and I asked him about it and he was like, no, no, I'm not ready. Even if he asked me, I'd say no at the minute because I'm rusty from everything and all this. And then as soon as the poster come out with him on, I literally messaged him and called him a fucking lying little slag and he was like, what? What's happening? What have I done? <laughs> I was like, you know fucking too well what you've done. The guy that runs it now... Um... Gav, he told me like back in July or something, as soon as the first show back was confirmed, uh, he asked me to stay after training one of the nights and basically said to me, I'm, I'm going to give you your debut in September, but you know, um, keep it on the down low we, when, until it's announced. Yeah. So, you know, I was just respectful of that. You know, it, it, it's very good of him to, to do that for me. Yeah. But um, obviously, well, Gav's recently ta- taken over. Um, I actually was told in February 2020 to get gear and music ready by the person that used to run it. So, like, I assumed I'd be debuting in May of 2020 because we had um, because we normally have a rumble match in May, mm-hmm. and most people debut in the rumble. So then, obviously, March 2020, the whole world decided to get ill. Um, <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Basically, what happened was a guy was going to give me a chance to be a wrestler and the world went, fuck, that can't happen. Send for <laughs> we must China. stop this. <laughs> Send for China. So, so some guy in China went, I've got to eat a fucking rancid bat before that guy makes a tit of himself. <laughs> um, and then 18 months later, us as humans went, fuck you, God. Um, <laughs> we've... <laughs> Uh, other religions are available. Um, <laughs> we went, Fuck you. Um, we've got a vaccine now, uh, so we can come out of lockdown and this guy can wrestle. So, yeah, I, I, I sort of had an idea that I was fairly close to a debut for a while. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, I wasn't actually really that nervous in all of the build-up to it, really. Mm-hmm. And then I woke up on the Saturday morning and I was like, Oh fuck! It's today. <laughs> and then after about an hour or so, I calmed down and I was just fine then. And then I got into Gorilla and I was fine. I was like, "Yeah, I'm really confident. I know what I'm doing." And then as my music started, I went, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> See, I know. But then as soon as, stepped, as soon as I stepped through the curtain, I felt fine again. Yeah. Is this game face on then? As soon as you start, that's it. You have no choice. Mm. But it's like. Yeah. I, I, I'd i be the opposite. The longer I know, the worse I would get because I would build it up into something. Yeah, you're like that then. So when I tried out for England for the roller derby, I literally got told by one of the guys that I trained with that he'd bought my ticket to go and do it because he was like, you're going to it whether you want to or not. And he told me that on the Thursday and the tryout was on like the Saturday, so I didn't have time to work myself up. The reason I didn't initially buy the ticket was because I'd worked myself up to a point where I couldn't even buy the ticket <laughs> because I was thinking about it and how nervous it was. I didn't know you had to buy a ticket to do that. Yeah, you had to buy a ticket to go to the tryouts because just to stop everybody turning up, isn't it? So you have to you have to purchase a ticket to go to the tryouts. They still have to rent the hall and everything. And as much yeah, as it's so that sort of make sure it's only sort of like serious people going and people. Yeah, because otherwise. Ticket. Every everybody and their dog turns up, don't they? And she's like, "Oh well, I'll have a go, and then I can say I've done it." I'm gonna try that for England, like. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you still get a few people that are like that anyway. Who could barely stand up, but was like, oh, "I want to say I've done it." But then they've thrown money in the kitty that's paying for the the hall rental and everything. Because even though it's Team England, it's not some massive government funded things. It's still a self funded sport. So yeah, I had to buy the tickets, and then when I made the training squad, and we did the um, that weekend tournament thing to raise money to actually go to the World Cup, that was the same again. That was that was the first time I was going to be stepping out with my England kit on, and I was a mess. As soon as that whistle went, it was like it was just training again. The way I went, I was fine, but rolling out. Cause what you do like a, a a lap of a lap of honor, and they call out all the people that are on each team as they skate around like for a couple of laps. And like that bit, I was literally, I felt almost hungover. I felt like there was sick in the back of my throat and it was horrible. I was so nervous and scared. But then the second that that whistle went, 
I was like, boof, on it, and I was fine, and didn't even think back about it the rest of the time. I'm assuming that was sort of a fairly similar thing for once you come out the curtains. Yeah, like, like I say, like you said before about game face, as soon as I come through that curtain, it was like, oh, I'm just sort of like doing what I know how to do now. Um, I love that, like, I told my little story and then your story about something completely unrelated was three times longer than mine. Yeah. <laughs> I over explain things. Like, I, I'm one of these people, I get accused of mansplaining and all that kind of stuff all the time. But the reason I do it, it's not because I think you're an idiot. It's because I think I'm an idiot and not explaining it properly. So I try and do it in 12 different ways. So I know I've definitely explained it right at one point. So, yeah, Nathan, that was my sight with your chest for this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, mine for you in that case is that you're a fucking lying little slag. <laughs> I knew that was coming. You're so predictable. Oh. And that's, next week. that's next week's sight with your chest, your predictability. <laughs> what made you start wrestling in the first place Jimmy Carnage who I wrestled on Saturday is like one of my greatest friends in the world Um, I've always loved wrestling and always sort of wanted to do it but I never sort of knew how to get involved with it and how to start doing it especially in this country where it's like nowhere near as big as it is over in the States Um, and then I found out that, that Jimmy was doing it and I sort of asked him about it and then sort of got into it through him really oh so you two mates before then you we were, we, i mean we're not mates now we, <laughs> you, 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 you bastard. <laughs> why why did you end up at aww is it just purely because, because that's, that's where jimmy, jimmy carnage was that's where jimmy was like i i knew jimmy like th- there are other wrestling schools closer to where i live because um i live sutton coldfield yeah so God, me you live miles away yeah, quite quite a way. Um, it takes me probably about forty minutes in the car to get there. Um, the worst you. was the worst was when my car was knackered and I was between cars, so my one car broke and I couldn't afford a new car for like two months. And I had to get the bus there, and that took like two hours to get there and two hours oh. to get back. So, but I did it because I just love it, man. Yeah, you should come and have a go. What? Yeah. Oh, fuck off. You should, you should come and have a go. Just just one session. Just come and have a see. No. Wrestling's not for me to do. You said, the thing is, you said, I really don't like wrestling. And then after the to show. Watch. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, but, but I you, do before it. that, you were like, no, I hate I it. I bruise Shit. too easily. All you have to do is touch my skin and I bruise. <laughs> It'll toughen well, you up. Well, we've got crash mats at training, so. Yeah, so you can just come and see what it's all about. You ain't got to actually become a wrestler. No, I ain't. No, I don't want to be touched up by wrestlers. No, thank you. <laughs> you don't have to get touched up by wrestlers. <laughs> Maggie would think you are cool. Oh, don't put that pressure on me. Yeah, That's not Maggie, fair. Maggie would think you're so cool. How do you feel about being a heel? I love it. You have so much fun as a heel. Like, if I'm just getting... Like, I can just, like, poke someone in the eyes... <laughs> kick someone in the balls or bite someone like whatever I feel like doing I can do like when you when you have to work as a face like you've got to follow the rules you've got to pander to the crowd you can't really yeah. be nasty it's just a freak she like, to be a dick isn't it like if yeah exactly like yeah. I'm nice all day every day in my like day job so like going to being allowed to go and get my frustrations out and be a dickhead to someone. I mean, <laughs> it helps. I suppose it does, being in. Do you ever find kids all day. your heel starts to come out at work ever? Nah. You don't I'll tell to, you the toughest thing about You don't have to wind it back in. <laughs> nah, it doesn't, to be fair. The toughest thing about being a heel is when you've got to give someone some shit, but you can't swear because we are a PG product, a family yeah. friendly product, and you're like, Sometimes you're just like, oh, yeah, well, you're stupid. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's what a seven-year-old would say. Yeah. So, yeah, nah. Like, I'm supposed to be a badass, but I've just used, used like, a, the kind of insult, like, Riley might come out with. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, he'd call you a bomber clark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might try that at the next show, just, just call a random member of the crowd a bomber clark. Maybe even Riley himself. Yeah, yeah he'd fucking love, love that. <laughs> Go, go sit down, you bumber clark. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say, well, you two said that you were going to rip up his um, thing? Oh, I'm going to rip up his sign at the next show. Oh, yeah. spoilers. 
Yeah. Spoiler for anyone attending our next show. I'm going to rip up his sign. <laughs> Little shit. She didn't call me a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just sat here and sorting you, kid. Oh, it's, 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 no, it's, it's fine. fine. It's perfectly worse. fine. <laughs> oh, I, I saw his little face when everyone started oh. chanting Mike's a moron. And Riley's face, he was like, I'm the coolest person here right now. <laughs> Every, everyone was chanting it and he got his sign up and he was like, yeah. Oh, God, he went mad. Yeah, do, you know, do you know what? Like, He actually saved my ass that night. Yeah. <laughs> Did he? Because I'd got Jimmy Carnage in the headlock, and I'm just going to break kayfabe a little bit here. Um, I'd got Jimmy Carnage in the headlock, and I basically put the headlock on him because I couldn't remember what the next thing we were going to do was. <laughs> I was like, I was like, James, what was the next spot? And he goes, I can't hear you. <laughs> like, what was the next spot? Like a bit louder. And he went, I still can't hear you. <laughs> and I was like, well, I can't really say it any louder. Yeah. Because everyone will hear me. I can't just go, oi, what are we doing now? Because <laughs> <laughs> I look like a right twat then. Yeah. Um, and I was like, but I still don't know what the next spot is, so I don't know what to do. And right now I'm just holding a guy in a headlock and like, where do I go from here? And I was like, just sort of like looking around like, shit, what do I do? What do I do? And I looked over, and there's Riley with his Mike Moron sign. And I was like, hey! And then I let go of the headlock and walked over to him. And I was like, well, you... Oh, I can't even remember what I said, but it was something like, what does that say? You shouldn't be calling me a moron. Respect your elders, that kind of... Like, like, whatever. <laughs> like that, yeah. You told him to sit so, down. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably something like that. I told everyone to sit down. But I was like, <laughs> that little kid just saved my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so that is the problem with being heel, though, isn't it? Because you're supposed to lead that moment. Yeah, but I knew we were ready to go into the next spot, and I was like, I can't remember what it is, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know when you're like, training for like, all this kind of stuff, do you actually pretty much do a show to train, to know what you're doing? What do you mean? Because like, <laughs> so, like, you, the next spot that you were going to do... Did you, like, rehearse the whole thing to nah. know what you were doing? Or did you just, like, no, no. say, oh, I'm going to do this next or what? So the match was announced, like, the week before the show. Yeah. Um, we found out about a week before that who we were going to face before all the matches were formally announced. Okay. Mm-hmm. And even from then, like, I've not been at a training session with the other two guys at the same time. Otherwise, I might have gone through a thing or two with them. Mm. But... Equally, um, I saw Drake uh, about a week and a half before the show and he was saying he'd got some ideas, but he was going to save them for the day. And the thing, like, I prefer that as well because if, if he'd told me 10 days before the day had come and I'd have been like, uh, what is it we're doing again? Yeah. I'd have just forgotten it all. So, and, and I personally don't like to plan too much because it's more to forget. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather just sort of know where we're going with it and then just call the rest of it in there. Yeah, so um, you have sort of a bunch of spots as well that are available to you, don't it? Like, so a spot's sort of a little sequence that will then kind of almost have a start and an end to it. Yeah. Um, and then you can lead them on. So uh, there's like the international, yeah, which is yeah. like a, a basic section. So if you're if you need to pad it out, you can just say to the person, just do the international. Because it's just like a little spot that you can put in, okay. so it's not. I tend to start a match with the international, though. Yeah, but you, you know what I mean. Like it, it's you don't have to plan out the whole match itself directly, because there's no, a bunch you could of little like, spots like, we'll that you can put in. Sounds like the 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 different pinning ones. Like the is it f- the what about the fish? Fish out of water. Yeah, like fish out of water. So and the rust habit and the blondie. Yeah. So you've got those different spots that you can just say and you can kind of do them. So even though the pla- the the match itself isn't planned, you've got a million, well, it's not a million, but you've got a whole load of little sections yeah. that are planned that you might not use any of them, but if you need to use them, you can say it. You can just, yeah, you've got options. Like... Yeah, you, you know the little bits, so there's always oh, okay. something available. Cool. I'm getting a proper um, lesson I've here. I've got an idea. 
I've got an idea for some I want I want to try training at some point in the next couple of weeks. Um, I want to do a face versus face match. Yeah. Um, and I've got an idea to like really stretch that out. So like the the plan I've got in my head is you'd probably do ten minutes without taking a bump <laughs> and have a real back and forth contest with it. Yeah. That gets both guys over and makes both guys look strong. So I mean that's something I want to try at training. I know I know I work here. Um, when we come to show day, but there, there's never any guarantees I'll stay as a heel. Yeah. You know, many people. I was going to ask that actually. Do you just year. stay as a heel or a face, or do you get to change? You, you get to change. It's like um, I tried to explain it to someone. Um, it's almost like EastEnders, for example, where like one day you think like Phil Mitchell's your favourite character, and then the next week is an alcoholic that punched his missus in the face and you hate him. But then three yeah. weeks after that, he's involved in a storyline where he saves a kid's life and it's like, oh my God, he's, he's yeah. Yeah. the best again. So like, <coughs> you, a lot of characters will change throughout time. So, yeah. Mm. Hey, you, what do you want to be? Uh, face, to start off with, for definite. Just because... Heel has too much responsibility in a match. <laughs> most faces are like good looking, Nathan. So, oh, Otis was a face for a while. I could pull that off. <laughs> I don't know who Otis is. I'll show you later. Okay, I love Otis, he's, he's amazing. Oh, Otis is just incredible. He, he bees the Kool Aid guy half the time and just goes, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh yeah, Monday! <laughs> Absolutely killed me the first time I hit said it. Right. What else have you got for him? I've questions got, wise. Where did the name come from, Mike Moreau? Oh, now this is a story I've told to a few people, um, so it might be great to to get that out there on a podcast. Go just on, so mate. every time someone asks me, I can go, oh, go listen to episode ten of the Car Clan, and then you guys get some more listeners, and I don't have to tell the bullshit story of awesome. hundred thousand times. <laughs> um, well, basically, my name is Alan, my, my shoot name is Alan, and I always wanted to be a heel, and I wanted the name Big Al as a sort of piss take on Big Gay Al from South Park. <laughs> Means thought, to me. I thought it might be something that the fans could rib me about. So yeah, I was going to be Big Al originally, um, that's what I wanted to be, and obviously, I'm not the smallest of people. Um, I've actually lost a lot of weight, but, like, yeah, I've never been, like, the smallest of people, so I was going to go with Big Al as my ring name. And then not long before I initially found out I might be having the debut, I found out there was a guy working fairly local that went by the ring name Big Al, and I was like, <laughs> shit, I've just got to think of something else that that's a little bit me. Um... And basically, when I went to university, I studied literature. Um, I love reading. It's always been like one of my go-to hobbies. Like I can just sit and read a book all day. And one of my favourite authors is H.G. Wells, mm -hmm. um, who wrote War of the Worlds and The Time Machine and The yep. Invisible Man. Um, but my favourite book of his is called The Island of Dr. Moreau. Okay. And that's where Moreau came from. I quite liked it as a name. I thought it was a little bit mysterious. The character of Dr. Moreau is a very, very unusual character. And he's a bit of a heel in the book as well. Yeah. Um, and then Mike came purely because I wanted a name that was alliterative because I quite like alliterative names. So like Jeff Jarrett and Big Boss Man and like anyone who's like got two names and they alliterate. I quite like that. So I was like, oh, what name begins with M to go with Moreau? Oh, yeah, Mike, that'll do. Could have been Mark. It could have been Matt. It could have been like... Malcolm. Melanie. Melanie. <laughs> See, I think that, Mike Moreau's got a good ring to it, though. Yeah, apart from the name. fact that, that the uh, the guy that announced it just didn't say it right. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Called me like Morio, like I'm like I'm a fucking <laughs> cookie that you can milk. I don't know, it's that. Sound like a Nintendo character. I'm gonna have to look out for it's this Morio. when I'm watching the video. I, I enjoyed watching it. 
and it was really weird. I, I had a. I, I feel like we're fairly good friends, and I, I felt like watching your debut. I had a, a, a little bit of pride in there. I was like, "That's my friend. That is, yeah." <laughs> yeah, I was the same when James debuted and when Kieran debuted, and like when other guys around me have debuted. Like, yeah. obviously, these guys all started before me as well, so it wasn't like. I was never like salty about someone else debuting, and yeah. even if I hadn't debuted now, like someone like Pete, who also de- debuted at the same show, like yeah. he worked so incredibly hard since he started training. He barely misses a session, and like he'll listen to anyone. It doesn't matter who it is. Like if it's a guy that's been training there ten minutes, he'll listen to what their opinion on what he's doing is. Mm-hmm. He's like a really humble guy. Yeah. Um, I don't think he realizes just how talented he is and i don't really think there's a glass ceiling for him he soaks everything up he's yeah i think he's going there like a year less than me and you mm. couldn't tell if you watched both of us work no pete like, pete, he, pete looked phenomenal he, he didn't look like that was his debut in the slightest the, the thing about having a good friend like pete debut on a, the same show i debuted on it was great that we shared that moment but it also really sucked because I was saying to Mickey Rowley, I learned loads from training, but I also learned loads when I was watching the show and doing like a bit of stewarding and a little bit of camera work and helping out with that kind of stuff. But when you're actually on the show and you've got to sit backstage, you can't watch anyone else's matches. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of sucks. I mean, there are places you can go to, to catch glimpses. I mean, there's a little hole in the curtain that you wouldn't know was there unless someone pointed it out. And you can sit and you can see the match from there. But people don't sell to the curtain, they sell to the crowd. So yeah. even if you're watching the match, you're not seeing everything. Yeah. So like that that part of it, like I don't get me wrong, I wouldn't change anything about my debut and it was it was so great to be backstage with all the lads and and you know, just having the crack that we had, but you also lose something when you're backstage you lose that sort of watching how everyone else is doing and, and yeah. being able to go the and saying oh, well, I suppose you actually miss the show don't you really because you, yeah. you you can't see it just to what you said a second ago where you went you wouldn't change anything from your debut <laughs> there's, no, there's no slag in you up here you're alright you're fine <laughs> <laughs> I heard the panic in you you, you laugh Lynn. No, um, there, there is maybe one thing I would change that I've just thought of go on in. I think it would have ended with my arm in the air and a big belt in the hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, um, so now I'm, that... I'm actually fairly humble about that. I, I didn't expect to win the belt when yeah. I'm making my debut. Um, I just, I was actually really hyped that I was in a title match. Well, cause that's a, that's yeah, a, it's really a hell of a push, nice isn't it? Debut. Yeah. Like you've, you've not even wrestled a single show. You know, you've got people on that roster people like Troy Jones who don't have a belt that could be in a position to go for that belt. Yeah. And they're like, do you know what? Now we'll give this new guy coming in a, a, a title match. Mm-hmm. So I've, that's brought up another question that I want you to explain, but I'll go back to my original one. So you, you said you wouldn't change anything. Do you think it's been better that you've debuted the way you have rather than debuting at a rumble? Oh, that's not really something I've thought about. Because um, obviously a rumble, you've got a lot more support there because you, you've got all the guys in the ring and and also the focus isn't so much on you either. Because yeah. Because if there's like ten of you in there and you just sit in the corner for five minutes, no one will probably know. Yeah. I guess in that sense, uh, yeah, I am glad I debuted the way I did. I think it gave me a chance to make a little bit more of an impact. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've lost the match, but I was out there. You know, you can be in and out in a, of a rumble in a couple of minutes, mm. depending on what you want. But, you know, I, I've gone on, gone out there. I've been trusted to put on a 10 to 15 minute match with two other guys. So the focus is more heavily on me in that yeah. time. And let's be and fair, you, people... you were a, 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 a big <clears throat> component of that as well, because they seem to bounce you between them. Yeah, They didn't... <clears throat> mess with each other too much it tend to be a lot of yeah, you we, we sort of um we sort of planned it so everyone would would have a period of time where they were on top and they were the focus yeah um so like we we planned that in and obviously 
I was involved in the very beginning where like me and Drake were going to team up and then he just turned on me instantly, bastard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then obviously I was involved in the finish, you know, I took the finishing move and then I was pinned. So, yeah. you know, like I do feel like the, the focus on me was there. But like when we were sort of talking about it, we were saying that, you know, going forward, Drake's retaining the title. So he's the bad guy, he's the heel, he's retaining the title. At the next show... It could be that he's working with Jimmy again. Yeah. As the face, it's unlikely he'd work with me as a heel. Yeah. So we sort of said there, well, if they're going to face off at the next show, I mean, at this point we don't know. But if that is the plan going forward, there's a nice little story there. With it was Jimmy's move that won the match, even though it was Drake that won the match. If that yeah. makes sense, it sort of gives Jimmy a legitimate claim to that title. Yeah. yeah. Keeps him looking strong coming out of it. Should he then get another shot down the line? I think that would have worked. So, he, like, from that, if he had got the pin, it also works for Drake trying to get the... It would have worked for Drake trying to get the belt back because yeah. he didn't beat Drake, he beat you. Yeah. So it's it exactly. would have worked no matter which way around it went. Mm. Then what if, what if the story we were going to tell was, you know, Jimmy was going to win, but he was going to feud with me afterwards? You know, it was well I never lost that match you know all depending on what the result on the day was going to be and what the story going forward was going to be sort of depended on how we were looking at it now obviously right now we don't know what the story going forward is going to be but we've thought to ourselves like what's logical here and and the most logical shot is that you know if a story between the three of us happens the most logical thing is it's going to be Jimmy and Drake yeah so we tried to play into that with the finish of the match yeah uh, so my other question: What's the difference in the belts at the moment? Because obviously there's the, there's the belt that Dante's got, and then there's the belt that Drake's got. So Drake's got the Academy title. That's our version of say like the Intercontinental title from WWE. Not our highest belt. Yeah. And then Dante's got our British title, our British World Heavyweight title. So he's like he's like the Roman Reigns if we're going to compare it to SmackDown. Yeah. He's the guy that's at the top of the card. He's got the main belt. Yeah. And mm. Drake's like, um, oh, I don't even know who the current champions in WWE are. Um, oh, Damian Priest is US type champion. So, like, he's like the Damian Priest. Like, he's the guy that they're pushing, but he's not in the main event picture. Although, I do think Drake's incredible and, and would be great in the main event picture. Yeah. Um, I think what's stopping Drake from being in the main event picture at the moment is that a heel has the belt. Yeah. If a face had the belt, Drake could well be challenging for it and not yeah. on a bat and eye. Yeah, I was thinking about that because I was thinking, like, you know, it'd be. It, he, could, uh, he, he could definitely step up to there, but then there's no one up there for him to really go after because there'd be no point in going after Mickey because he, he's not really going to actually progress any further if he did that he'd, he'd get a great match they, they would have an incredible match I've oh yeah about that but uh, they wouldn't be feuding over about the way that they they could if he we had a face champion like if mickey was champion yeah then yeah we could have drake and mickey fighting for for the british title yeah i don't have any more questions that are actually there, wrestling there related are, there are a load there, there not, that are actually wrestling related listen oh, okay you don't have any more wrestling related ones so um, if you do get them out of the way why don't you edit point here? Uh, why don't you ask me who I'd like to face next? No, I don't care who you'd like to face next. <laughs> don't come here telling us how to do a fucking podcast. <laughs> I'll ask you. Who would you like to face next? Wow, where did you come up with that question? <laughs> um, I actually wouldn't mind who I face next, to be honest. So that's why I didn't want to no ask one... him. <laughs> no one hated me to... There's no one at AWW I wouldn't like to work with. Um, if I had to choose, I would say I wouldn't wrestle Drake or Jimmy next. I'd want to wrestle somebody different, mm-hmm. just to have that experience on a show with someone else. And I think if I was able to handpick my next opponent, I'd go for uh, Eric Battleborn. Yeah. Which is uh, probably unlikely, seeing as we're both very new to, to being on shows. But I think, you know, I've worked with Pete many a times at training and 
we we tend to gel quite well mm. when we are in the ring together, and I, I just think we we'd have a very good solid match. Yeah, I think that'd be quite um, a nice match as well because you're two very different wrestlers. Yeah, like like Pete's match with um, Axel, Axel was was really good, but they're fairly similar in sort of size and nimbility. <laughs> Is that a word? Right. Nimbleness. Whereas yeah. you know you're you're a bit more of a powerhouse compared to like what Pete would be. Yeah, and I mean, like, with with my debut match, we were essentially three powerhouses going at it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it'd just be a completely different dynamic. I'd be working a different style of match, and I think mm-hmm. I'd like that as well. Like the the challenges that that brings, I think that'd be a good experience for me. I think that's everything wrestling questions wise. What else you got? Marvel or DC? Ooh, now you have Batman leggings. That- that depends on if you're talking movies or TV shows. Because the Marvel movies should fall over the DC movies. But I was going to say DC... movies because I don't watch any of the TV shows. But have you watched the new Marvel TV show things like WandaVision and... Yeah, I'm not a fan of... I wasn't a fan of WandaVision, to be honest. I haven't watched them, but they seem to be getting people excited. Let them answer God question. What, 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 what? WandaVision's the only one I watched. Uh, yeah. I didn't bother with any of the others yet. Um, that's not to say I won't. Um, I also want to watch The Mandalorian, which is Marvel because it's it's Star Wars, which is owned by Marvel now. I thought it was owned by Disney. Disney owned Marvel. Yeah. But Marvel. It's all on... But Marvel. It's all on... D- Disney isn't yeah. Marvel, but Marvel's Disney. Disney own fucking everything. So movies, the it, it's um... movies is Marvel, TV shows is DC. Why? What what TV because shows have have made it? Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow. I wasn't a massive fan of Supergirl, but like the Marvel TV shows, I weren't really a fan. I think. What about Avengers. cartoons? I haven't watched those cartoons since I was like a kid. Spider Man and X Men were way better than the Batman cartoon. Now, see, I quite liked the Batman cartoon, <laughs> but I did like Spider Man and X Men as well. Favorite superhero? Oh, that's a tough one. <sighs> Couldn't give an answer to that. You got to. Not when, not when, not when you just throw it on me. If you just, I just throw it on you. Oh, we, we should have, we should have, we should have briefed you on this question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's none that you just go. Oh, yeah. No, not even Batman who's on my leggings. Have, have you got like a couple battling it out in your head, or is it just all of them? I quite like the Flash. I quite like. What about superheroes? What do you like? <laughs> Carrot Boy. <laughs> Carrot Boy. <laughs> Banana Man, I forgot about him. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Captain Underpants, that's my favourite superhero. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? You got any that are uh, not like teacher training questions? Yeah. Do you want some snails? <laughs> Do you want some snails? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we've got uh, so many other bloody right. things. Thank you. Have them in your classroom. Yeah, take them to school. Get the kids to look and after. What do I do in a six-week holiday? Just leave them to die. Oh, I don't care. They're your problem at that point. <laughs> you send you send them back with a kid for the six weeks holidays. <laughs> and you can nominate no, someone I'll, to look after them. I'd rather not have some snails. They're pretty cool. Me they're just there's just too many. I don't want any of them. I'll be honest. It's <sighs> fucking gross when they die. <laughs> yeah. One of them fell from the top and just. Died, I presume. Un- unplunged itself off the top of the tank and fell down to the rocks below. It did, I swear to God. And Suicidal in the bottom, snail. Where all the soil stuff was, it was just a puddle of gunk. It was disgusting. Yeah. Did the other snails eat it? Possibly. Uh, I don't know. I don't bit. know how long it was there for. We heard a dunk, didn't we? A couple of days before that, but we just thought, oh, it just fell from the top again because they do it all the time. But, but it must have killed that, it. They don't normally fall from the top. Normally, what happens is where they change direction, their shell will swing and it'll clang on the window. Right. And, but that's what we assumed had happened. But this one must have just completely unstuck and fell from the roof to its death. I've got to say, you're probably not going to be very successful at even giving these things away if you just tell this story to people. Yeah, they're suicidal. Yeah, it's perfect. You only have to have them for a few months, and then they kill themselves. 
Yeah, but then the blokes and gooey and eating each other. Yeah, but you don't, see, here's the trick. You don't let them have babies. Yeah. I'll just stop two Just have one stocking. and you're fine. You don't make the soil as deep as we did in the first place. Cause they we, like to, you. Yeah, okay. No, well, it was your fault. I was only going to put the one thing in and you told me to put two in. But that's neither here or there. We, we've we've had it happen. The problems the problems in existence. An ongoing one forever now. Because they're fertile and they're just going to keep having fucking babies yeah, constantly. You just get rid of the eggs, though, don't you? It's fine. It's now. a bit like you two, really, isn't it? <laughs> no, it fucking isn't. <laughs> just keep having babies. I'm done now. I heard you were allergic to work. That's what Nathan was saying. You fucking cunt. You keep getting pregnant so you can have a year off and get paid for it. I never said that at all. I don't even get paid for the fucking year off anymore. Have you had too many? (laughs) Oh! I went, fuck off, we're paying out for that again. (laughs) I've only had two whilst actually being in work. Too official. Oh, two official, two yeah, official two, two, No, two official periods of being off on maternity. But you had, like, the entire pregnancy off for both of them pretty much because you're not very good at being pregnant. I can't help that. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you've started now. Well, if we're going to do this, I'm going to drop you in it. I told him there was a load of stupid questions and he went, what did Kelda write them? <laughs> <laughs> Alan... <laughs> Hang on, let me just unsend that message before I ask you to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> you both are just bastards. Do you have another joke for us? I've, I've just lost my sense of humour because um, I'm back at work now. So, like, mm-hmm. all the joy has been sucked out of my soul. <laughs> <laughs> uh. What year do you teach? Year five. So they're almost actually having to teach at that point. That's when you stop letting them play with the number blocks and things. <clears> right? <laughs> right, let, me, let me just ask you a question that um, all my year fives would be able to answer earlier on today. Oh, Nathan. no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Go Who is Eva Crane? Who? Eva Crane. Oh, fuck knows. <laughs> don't know, but did you know before you read it out of the workbook? <laughs> <laughs> did you know like, before you was a teacher no probably not there you go then <laughs> Eva Crane so you, I don't know give it give, give a clue she's famous in the field of science it was a science lesson that we learnt about her in oh okay um, no, I've got one inv- do you know who Joe Exotic is? Because <laughs> he knows who Joe it's Exotic is. Yeah, good lad. <laughs> I like, Do you know that bloke's died? Yeah, but how many of your year fives know that? Mm. Hopefully none of them. <laughs> what bloke's oh, died? You know the guy who was um, Hang on. the head zookeeper there? He's died. They found him dead in his bed in his room today. S- today? Yeah. Wow. Did the tiger eat him? Everybody says Carol Baskin did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to teach Carol Baskin killed her husband. 100%. I'm going to teach Willow to say that. Whenever she gets in trouble, I'm going to teach her to say, it wasn't me, it was that bitch Carol Baskin. (laughs) (laughs) It's just going to... I'm going to wait until she's like four, (sighs) and I'm going to teach her that's a response when you tell her off, and you're just going to lose your... I'm so glad she's not going to be coming to school I teach her. (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't me, it was Carol Baskin. I've got another, another wrestling question. I suppose we can reorder them when you edit a bit, can't you? So that the wrestlers are together more. Work yeah, it's fine. She's not at work, so she's got plenty of oh, time. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I still have three kids to look after, you know. One of them sleeps all day, and the other two are back at school full time. So she Alan, does not people, sleep all day. people like Alan are looking after them, so you got plenty yeah. of time. So I feel like you owe me this. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So <laughs> back a question: How did you, um, how did you decide on your sort of your move set? First of all, you've got to find moves that you like and you can do, that you're comfortable hitting on pretty much anyone. Not every move you've got to be able to hit on everyone. But, yeah, moves that you like, that you're confident doing, that you can hit on most people. Um, and then you've kind of also got to check that that move isn't taken mm-hmm. by someone else. Like, 
if I really like the rock bottom, for example, Troy Jones uses it, so I can't really use it. I could maybe use it if I was in a match with Troy Jones to sort of take the piss. Yeah. Because I'm a heel. If I was a face, I probably wouldn't do that. You, you might also find that you do a move slightly differently to someone else and someone likes the way it looks. Like um, I do a butterfly suplex, which is like a suplex, but you hook both their arms before mm-hmm. you hit it. Um, only when I do it, most people release when they get to the top and just throw the other person. However, I sort of twist in midair and come down like you would on a hip toss. Yeah. And I just did that one day. Just I was fucking about and I was like, oh, I'll just do it like this. Yeah. And straight away, like, Mickey Rowley was like, that was fucking cool. And yeah. I was like, so I'll just throw that into my moveset and that'll be my thing. Like, anyone can throw a butterfly suplex in at any point, but I do it differently to everyone else. Yeah. And I was told by the guy that was training me that it looked cool, so... I, I, I hear rumour that you've got a story for us. I do, I do. You had a ghost story on the last episode or, or something similar. Yeah. <laughs> and I've actually got a paranormal experience that Ooh. was not experienced by me but was, like, really weird and has always made me question if paranormal entities are real and it's kind of made me think that they are okay if you do um, move in here for a week you will definitely believe in it <laughs> trust me <laughs> basically um my granddad died when i was younger yeah. um i think i was about six or seven at the time but i'd got a younger brother who was like three and at that age kids just don't understand the concept of death Mm. Like they don't understand what's happening so like he would be like oh where's granddad when can we see granddad yeah and at the time granddad lived with us as well um grand we, we'd moved in with granddad when my nana died so he wouldn't be alone mm. so it was probably three months after my granddad had died so it was still quite raw with us all um and my brother was he was potty trained but we were sort of trying to get him out of the habit of wetting the bed at night. What we'd do is, like, my mum and dad would, like, put him to bed, make him go to the toilet before he went to bed, but then when mum and dad would go to bed, they'd wake him up and take him for a wee and yeah. then get him up early in the morning again. That, that you know, general kind of stuff. But a couple of months after my granddad had died, um, the one morning he come downstairs and he said, um, oh, where's granddad? And mum was like, oh, well, we can't see granddad you know we've tried to explain it to you before but but we just won't see granddad again and he was like well he was here last night and we were like what do you mean he was here last night and he said um he woke up in the middle of the night and he needed that was a fucking weird someone's just knocked the door <laughs> was it the snail falling off <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking weird i thought the door opened Carry on. <laughs> um, he said he, he woke up in the middle of the night and he needed a wee. And Grandad took him to the toilet and held his hand while he went to the toilet and then took him back to bed. Oh, wow. And, like, he was at an age where he just didn't understand the concept of death. Yeah. So that would freak him out? That'd be quite nice for him, actually. So it didn't freak him out and, like, it didn't freak us out either, but, like, we were like, well... It's not the kind of thing a kid at that age is going to make up. No. Mm-hmm. And it'd be the kind of thing if my granddad was there in the middle of the night, like just generally when he was alive and my brother needed the toilet, he'd have just took him to the toilet. What do you think you'd have done if you'd have seen him? <coughs> Cracked me Because <laughs> <laughs> I was old enough to understand. Yeah. I, I think, like I said, I, I think there is stuff... And I, I think loved ones will pop back just to check on you. Yeah. Almost. Because I remember when my nan died. And the the thing that makes it believable is that the same thing happened to my mum on the same night. So I was in bed and I vividly remember my nan coming sitting on the edge of my bed. And my whole... Like, I remember my bed... Like dipping. dipping where she sat on it and everything, and she just spoke to me and just said, you know, look, it's everything's going to be okay. And sorry, I didn't get to 
so have I kind of thing. And then I got up in the morning and I was really upset. And I talked to mum about it and she was like, well, she came and sat on my bed last night as well. And so it was like, and I'd have been eight or nine, so I was old enough to understand. But yeah, mum was like, yeah, the, the, the same night, the, the same thing happened to her, which makes me, you know, if I'd have, if I'd look back on that, I'd have just gone, oh, I was an eight year old upset and missing me nan yeah but for mom to then go yeah she sat on the edge of my bed as well it just gives it a bit more validity yeah well i've already said i, I believe i believe in it i just don't want to because <laughs> it scares me sometimes <laughs> we just have random shit happen i saw the cat i've okay. seen the i've seen the cat like loads i've seen the cat today you know, you'll have to come and, as well you know you'll have to come over and see the cat i saw the cat last night on a couch bed because i thought one of the cats was in the house and then I was like, no, none of them are. Do you have a Mrs. Allen? No. Why? Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> We've over. I've got an ex-wife. An ex-wife? An ex-wife, yeah. Why? Because <laughs> I got divorced. <laughs> yeah, but why did you get divorced? Because she wasn't the right person for me. <laughs> It's just counselling happening now, just dragging you into <laughs> that's, that's my rehearsed answer. So, <laughs> so, it was in the last podcast, wasn't it? So, when you get divorced, do you have to have a, a good reason, or can you just say, I want to get divorced? Ah, now, <laughs> this is something we could have discussed. Okay. Um, there are, I think, five reasons for divorce, I think. Um you've lived separately for two years and you both agree you've lived separately for five years and one of you agrees um Adultery. adultery is one of them. the one where you've lived separately one of them's called like something like reckless abandonment or something fucking off for two years can be that you've gone to prison as well really yeah so even if like if nathan went to prison tomorrow for five years he would technically still live at your address He's just in prison. But if you applied for a divorce, I'm pretty sure you could get it on the grounds that he's not lived with you in the last five years. So what did you want to get divorced over? <laughs> you want raping me? Yeah, can you can you get divorced over putting your finger in their mouth when they yawn? <laughs> Is that one of them? Is it... Have you put your fingers in any other girl's mouth or any boy's mouth? No, I don't think so. So you've not really been adulterous. <laughs> <laughs> One more uh, wrestling-based question before you go. Go on. What? Um, how, how did you find getting your uh, your ring gear? Like, how how did you find uh, the process of deciding what you were going to wear? Oh, that's um, quite a tough one. Uh, I I literally had no idea what I wanted to wear. I didn't even know about colours or anything, and then. Um, I just googled like wrestling singlets or something and something cheap and cheerful came up and I bought that I was like oh, that's just something in the bank for if I need it um, and I bought another wrestling singlet that came with a pair of tights and they looked absolutely fucking ridiculous and I was like <laughs> I want a really fucking ridiculous pair of wrestling tights. So then I was like, right, I'm going to wear tights. And then I was just like Googling wrestling tights and I found the, the Batman pair. That's cool. <clears throat> See, I thought I knew what I wanted, bought some bits and hated it. So I, I've definitely come to the conclusion that I don't want to wear a top. I, I thought I wanted like a, you know, like a, like a, a skin tight top type thing on. Right. And I just felt so self-conscious wearing it. Like I, um, I feel less self-conscious in my skin than I do in a skin-tight top. I think what you got to do first of all is figure out your ring name and your gimmick, mm-hmm. and then sort of like something that would fit with your character. Maybe design yourself a logo or something. Yeah. Um, and then you sort of go from there, and maybe get it put on a t-shirt and sell it at the show. For twelve pounds. <laughs> for twelve pounds. <laughs> and pay twelve pounds to have it made as well. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to say to the listeners before we go? Don't listen to this piece of shit podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great endorsement. But at least it's at the because end. You, you might end up on here. 
<laughs> You've got to go to work the next day. And Alan, can you do us uh, a jingle, please? Diddly 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 do. Mike Moreau. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's that's happening. I'm in charge yeah. of music. That's happening. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> if that if he meant that, it had already done it. Well, I didn't have one that said Mike Moreau before, and now I do. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, yeah, that's him actually saying it. You could use it. <laughs> you fucking lying little slag. <laughs> Can't, Can't have that, that one. It's a PG Not family show. friendly. <laughs> Did you see the um, the sign that Riley held up with that on it? No, I didn't, but um... I, Nathan sent me a picture of it. <laughs> oh, God. So that one will be at the next show as well. <laughs> I might rip that one up as well. <laughs> wipe my ass with it they're get, uh, going to get everyone chanting FLLS at you and they won't know why they're chanting it but it'll just be a thing that gets chanted at you sure <laughs> listen reckon... if anything I've proved my loyalty there because I was told not to tell anyone and I didn't mm. no you did good you did good oh god I mean you technically wouldn't have told me because I called it and you just told me I was wrong because <laughs> you were like I've kept you behind to speak to you after your training, so uh, congratulations on your debut. I, got one about. <laughs> I was like, what are you on about? You was like, when Gav spoke to you after training, it was because your debut, wasn't it? I was like, no, he was asking me about video in the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like 90% joking. But <laughs> there was a little bit of me that was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder. But then I did hear you guys talking about all the... Like uh, music and shit as well, and then I got roped into that. <laughs> diddly, 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 diddly. The car clan. Yay! Yeah. There we go. That will be going on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for listening to episode ten of the Car Clan podcast. Well, this week it has been myself, my uh, farting wife, <laughs> and. Uh, Fucking lying little slag, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, not going to give him my Twitter handle or anything? You, that's, that's on you, buddy. Anything you want to plug, go for it. Now's your chance. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Mike Moreau A-W-W. Are you spelling it? Um, IT is how I spell it. Well done. But my Twitter handle, it's Mike, M-I-K-E, Moreau, M-O-R-E-A-W. Uh, no, sorry, E-A-U. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you are the teacher <laughs> of our <laughs> youth. <laughs> fucking no chance. Can't even spell his own bastard name. A-W-W is self-explanatory. So, so it's Mike, M-I-K-E, Moreau, M-O-R-E-A-U, <laughs> and A-U-W, which is spelt A-W-W. Yeah. Me. <laughs> what does A-W-W stand for? Alternative Wrestling World. I got it right. <laughs> Yeah. Watch your, your Instagram and your Facebook and your your OnlyFans. I don't have Instagram. Um, Facebook, you just search Mike Moreau and look for my logo. If you don't know what my logo is, come to our next show and you'll see it on my T-shirts. They're also for sale. £12 um, for an what, adult, £10 for a child. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my OnlyFans okay uh, I don't actually have an OnlyFans but if anyone wants to send me money I can send you some erotic photos of myself <laughs> <laughs> just direct messages <laughs> so thank you for joining us Alan it's been lovely chatting with you make sure you like and subscribe to Mike Moron and um, the Car Clan stuff all over the place <laughs> But yeah, go do all the likes and the subscribes. And uh, Have you got a YouTube or anything? Not yet. Maybe in the future. Sweet. When I've got some footage to put up. If you want an editor, I'm here for money. For money? Oh, for yeah, because you don't work. <laughs> I, <swear laughs> I walked God. straight into it. He's been him. She's been her. And I've been him as well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Alan. Bye, Alan. Bye, you have guys. a good one, buddy. Bye. And go. Diddly, 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 diddly